Hello, extraordinaries, and welcome back to another episode of the High Performance Consciousness Podcast. My name is Matthew Patty, and today we are going deep into beliefs. And I want to blow the door off the concept of limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs immediately sets you up for a downward spiral in achieving your results. So let's dive into it. And uh, in my usual way, deep is best. So let's not stay on the surface for too long. All right. So as for uh, the earlier episode where I spoke about alignment, the promise was to do this episode around beliefs. So it's going to follow a very similar format to help you reframe your focal points and to reframe and build a stronger, clearer agenda for you to experience your results, what you deem as success ahead of time. So let's go to the dictionary. So I've looked up the definition of belief and here's what it says as a noun. So an acceptance that something exists or is true, especially one without proof. Hmm. Very interesting. And also interesting, the example that the dictionary gives here, his belief in extraterrestrial life. Nice one, uh, especially one without proof. Well, that's uh, that's funny. Anyway, I go on a tangent. The second point it makes here is that belief is uh, linked to trust, faith or confidence in someone or something. And here's the example, a belief in democratic politics. Uh, another funny example. So. What are beliefs and uh, why are beliefs so strong in helping to curate and navigate our reality? Beliefs are the body straight away. You are a body of belief. So unconsciously, every or a great portion of your thoughts, actions and feelings are led by your beliefs. What sits on top, so on top of your beliefs are your perspective of the world. So let's say that you were brought up in an environment that elicited and fed, grew a belief about the world looking a particular way. It's hard to exist in the world or it's hard to make money. And we see that example littered all the way through documentation and books and examples of people on their entrepreneurial journey. That if I was had the belief installed at an early age that money was hard to come by, then I am carrying that belief subconsciously into my waking life and my thoughts, actions and feelings become aligned with that fuel, with that premise that money is hard to come by. So one of the biggest questions that a lot of people ask is how do I define what my beliefs are? How do I know what my beliefs are? First and foremost, look outside of you. Look at the results you have in your current life without judgment, without ridicule, without guilt or shame. Just observe the results of your outer world. What are your relationships like? What's your communication like? What, what is your financial status like? What is your health like, your job or your career, your vocation? All these areas of your life are primed with your beliefs. And so, or be that, that it may, you may say, well, okay, well, I can see that there are some preferred and some unpreferred experiences in my reality when I look at my areas of life. Some I like more than others. Some I'm closer to defining as being successful or harmonious or fulfilling than others. So when you want to go deeper into the belief, you must go into the body. The body carries the belief. The belief is the agent or the ally in producing your result. So if you have a belief that is running deep within you, that is showing evidence of consistently becoming real, that you that money is hard to come by, then you will come in to experiences stumble upon them or have them brought upon you, as it were, that money is hard to come by. That every time money comes into your account, immediately it's removed it's by some unknown force, whether it being a speeding fine, a parking ticket, an overpaid bill, you know, whatever it may be. 
So we end up being trapped in a very tight bandwidth of experience. So we attract money, we lose money. We attract love, we lose love. We attract success, we lose success. And we bounce in between this very small bandwidth, very shallow bandwidth of experience and wonder why we feel so overwhelmed and so anxious and so, you know, almost frustrated at times that why can't I get ahead? Why can't things be easier? Why does it have to be so hard? Well, it comes down to the belief. The body of belief is the electromagnetic signature that you are broadcasting 24-7, 365 from the body. So the body of belief is essentially what do you believe to be true about yourself in your reality that is showing evidence of being real. And so belief is linked to tangible proof. And so way back in one of the early episodes, I danced between the subconscious, the conscious mind and the superconscious. And I spoke about the subconscious mind. Beliefs are in the subconscious. The subconscious is in the body, how you think, act and feel through the body. The subconscious is what you walk around with all day long. The subconscious is what you become intimate with, consciously or unconsciously, every night you go to sleep. So your belief is your compass. And I'll bring it up like I did in the alignment episode, which is there is no limiting belief. There are only beliefs. So when you start to move away from your focal point of what is limiting and what is limitless, then you can start to move away from this judging mind, this conscious mind, the analytical mind that wants to try and repair or fix or prove right. Let me say that again. So when we are in the limiting belief, the structure of limiting beliefs and thinking that beliefs are limiting or they're limitless, then we are trapped in duality. We're trapped in the polarizing of our conscious mind, wanting something to be right or something to be wrong, something to be true or something to be false, when in fact, beliefs are beliefs. And so let me go back to the example of the uh, that I put forward in the alignment episode. And if you uh, haven't listened to that, then go back and listen to it. I highly encourage you to do it before this. So in that episode, I referred to alignment being the arrow that you release towards a target and that the will, your free will, gets to point that arrow through the use of the bow in any direction you want. Any direction you freely choose to send that arrow, you can release the arrow of intention towards the desired target. So your belief is the body, the arm that pulls back the string of the bow to release the arrow. So as you pull the string back using your arm, using your core and all the other parts of the anatomy to hold the structure and to keep it steady and strong, the belief sends with alignment your intention on its journey towards its target. So do you believe you can reach the target? That might be one thing. Do I believe that I can experience the results of hitting the target in your business, in your cash flow, your love life, your health, whatever it may be? Now, at the beginning, you might say, well, I'm not trained in using a bow and arrow. Well, get trained in it, which is what we're doing through these episodes. So like anything, an entrepreneur is an athlete. You must train for the performance. You must train and perform and rehearse in order to experience the result. And in training and rehearsing your performance and the result of your desires, the end, the results of what you deem as success ahead of time, you are training the body to believe in the target. You are training the body to believe what is possible and therefore probable for you. I hope this is making sense. Again, another Jacques Cousteau moment. We do go deep quickly. So 
If you do need to go back and re-listen to this episode or any episodes, then make sure you do that. Because again, I want to drop great concepts for you to shift your mind, your focus, and your capability to new levels of awareness and potential. Because you are awesome. You have incredible talents and abilities and untapped potential by way of alignment and belief and state of being. So let's jump back into the belief. So a belief really is the strong arm of the bow. Okay. So when you look at the external results of your life in the early example I gave in this episode, and you might deem some areas as not being as fulfilling as others, or some areas being more fulfilling than others, then you can start to ask, in order for me to be experiencing this result, what must I believe about myself and the world to be true? Wow, that's a big question. That's a doozy. So you could sit with a cup of tea, cup of coffee, your favorite drink, whatever it is, and navel gaze on that question for hours is the key. Most people won't, which is why most people miss their target. I'll say it again. Most people, upwards of 97% of people, won't focus and give themselves permission to come up with the answer and to dig deep for the quest- uh, with a question such as that in order to experience their ultimate desires, in order to experience what they deem as success. So I'm encouraging you to do the exercise. So in my current reality, this is evident because I can see it, I can feel it, I can taste it, touch it, and therefore it's real to my senses. So in order for this to be real, what must I have had believed up to this point about myself and the world to be true that is self-evident in the result that I'm seeing. And you might sort of say, oh, that doesn't feel very good. That one's, uh, that's a bit of a stingy slap behind the knees, that one. And that's the reality. So with awareness, you can say, well, I'm not judging the fact. I can just feel the body of evidence. I can feel the body of belief through my emotions and how I felt as an, as uh, when that answer arose in me, and I can observe it. Now, if you're looking at your outside world and you're saying, well, in this particular area of my life, I mustn't love myself very much because I continually and consistently welcome, in inverted commas, not so much, but I'm doing it unconsciously, these types of experiences over and over and over again. Think, well, how do I love myself more if what I'm currently experiencing is showing evidence that I don't love myself enough? Because all of our experiences are teachers. All of the people, places, events, and circumstances in our life are teachers. So the question then is is begged to, to answer. How can I love myself more? The simple question invokes a simple response. Change your alignment. Change your alignment from what you think about and act upon and feel about all day long in as far as what the result you're currently experiencing. Change your alignment now. So ask the question, what is the evidence that would show itself to be real when I am in love with myself, when I do love myself? what evidence appears when I love myself. And write down those those answers. It might be, well, I feel more harmonious in my relationship. I speak more openly and truthfully and with honor and integrity and conviction of my own truth. I am openly um, embracive of other people's points of view. You know, I attract new clients and new opportunities easily and effortlessly, day in day, week in week. You can start to unpack this. I sleep better. I'm not as worried, whatever it may be. This is a critical, critical point. And it links back to that word because, which I mentioned in the previous episode of alignment. So your beliefs are the strong arm that directs the arrow towards its target. If I believe that I will hit my target 
it is because I have found evidence in my past that proves when I take this type of action, I hit my target. Likewise, with beliefs, when I use the strong arm, releasing the arrow from the bow, I have no evidence of hitting my targets in the past. So lots of my desires fall short of being fulfilled. Does this make sense? So all of a sudden you're starting to think, well, my past is now creating my future. The strong arm that releases the arrow from the bow is my beliefs. The belief that I have about myself in this area of my life. And we might have several beliefs running as a pattern or program behind the scenes in the subconscious. So you can start to wind back and reverse engineer it. For me to hit the target and to know what it feels like to hit the target, to experience the results of what I deem as success or the tangible evidence that comes from achieving that result, then I can wire my body and my mind through my actions and my feelings to and that new future ahead of time. And I can do it repeatedly, rinse and repeat, because practice makes permanent. Remember the entrepreneur and the athlete. You must train your body for success. You must train your state of being for success. So we reverse engineer it. And now the strong arm of releasing the arrow from the bow is carrying little bit by little bit the proof by way of the belief that the evidence is already arrived of my success, which means that I'm capable of achieving and fulfilling and reaching my target because my body is now responding to what it feels like ahead of time, what it thinks like and the actions that it takes on a consistent, repeatable basis when I am in my success element, when I am in my new future and the experiences that I'm having around success. So I hope the penny's dropping for you here. Instead of going into your past to resurrect the dead, to resurrect the old experiences, and to try and unstitch this beautiful tapestry called life, look to your future and bring, by being clear on what you want, and advance your future to you by enrolling yourself in the future of what it looks like like, feels like, functions like, and what the experience and the richness, tap, the rich tapestry of that experience feels like, bring it into the now. And as you continue to take action and your thoughts and your feelings are aligned with the actions that you take on a day-by-day -day basis, moment by moment, then the strong arm that is pulling the string back on the bow and releasing the arrow towards its target is being upgraded. It is being trained with a new belief. Because every time you take action on a worthy ideal, every time you take the smallest action towards your, the fulfillment of your, uh, your success or your preferred experiences, you are upgrading your belief. And that's why one thing equals everything, the micro and the macro. So the littlest things you do on a day-by-day -day basis perform at a micro level and magnify and ripple out into the macro level. So if you are placing three things on your to-do list every day and you tick those three things off, no matter what they are, how big or how small, you are building your confidence. You are building strength in your ability to execute, to take action, to pull the trigger on your decisions. And by doing that, your strong arm becomes stronger and it becomes more stable and it becomes more certain before it releases the arrow of intention towards its target. So stop looking in the past for evidence and proof of your future success. You will not find it there. Even if you've experienced success in the past, come down in the last shower, as grandma says, be born anew and raise yourself from the death of the past by bringing into your awareness your full potential, which is your desires fulfilled, which is your end in mind. Bring it into the now and embody that experience ahead of time. Your belief will 
match up to your preferred experiences when you continue to take aligned action with aligned thought and feeling on a day by day, moment by moment basis. So I didn't want to get all biblical there and uh, you can read into it whatever you want, but essentially from a metaphysical perspective, a science perspective and a quantum and materialistic perspective, this is all game changing material. So go ahead and ask that big question of yourself. Do the necessary navel gazing and build strength in your bow arm. All right. Have an amazing day from me here to wherever you are in the world. Remember, it's all you, baby. See you in the field.